Okay, this is lesson three, part two for sixth grade oceans, atmosphere, and climate. And in this part, we're going to be evaluating new evidence. For this part of the lesson, the three things that you'll need are something to write with and on and another person to talk to. Okay, so we're going to start this part of the lesson by getting a new email from Kitty Parada. So Kitty Parada is the director of the New Zealand Farm Council. And in lesson one, we saw our first email from her. So if you haven't seen lesson one, you should go back and watch it because this whole lesson will make more sense if you've seen lesson one and two first. Okay, so here's what Kitty says. Now that you have learned more about what determines a location's temperature, you are ready to begin helping us determine why Christchurch, New Zealand's air temperature is cooler than usual in El Nino years. I am sending evidence that might help, might help you with this investigation. Please review the evidence carefully. Remember, your research will help the farmers be better prepared to protect their crops and livestock from temperature changes in the future. Best regards, Kitty. Kitty Parada, director of the New Zealand Farm Council. So Kitty brings up a couple of really important things, which is why is this so important? Why would the Farm Council of New Zealand be reaching out to scientists to understand more about El Nino? And many different organizations reach out to scientists to find answers to questions. And that's why it's so important for you as a student climatologist to try to understand this so that we can give Kitty Parada some information about this to help the farmers in New Zealand. Okay, so let's look at some of the new evidence. So here's some evidence that Katie Parada sent for us. The first thing that she is pointing out to us is a graph that we have already received, but I want you to notice a couple of things in the graph. One, what does this graph show? And what questions do you have about the information on the graph? So pause the video and in your notebook, take a moment to answer question one and two. There's a couple of things that I'm going to point out to you that you might be noticing on your own, which is that this graph has a vertical, which goes up and down. The y-axis is showing the degrees in Celsius. That's how warm or cold something is measured by temperature. And there's two bar graphs. The first one shows the temperature in Christchurch, New Zealand during a normal year and during El Nino in, sorry, and the temperature the air temperature in Christchurch, New Zealand during an El Nino year. Now we've seen this graph before and we've realized that El Nino years have a colder temperature, which means they are, um, the air temperature has less energy. So um, you'll notice that the two graphs have different temperatures. Knocked over my flashlight. Put that away. So what questions do you have? I mean, I wonder why. Why is this happening? Like, what's different about El Nino? So, Kitty promised us new evidence, and this is old evidence, so let's take a look at the new evidence. Okay, so, in the new graph, you'll notice that the picture at the top, or sorry, the label at the top is different. This is the average ocean surface temperature near Christchurch, New Zealand. And if I look at this, it's similar to what I saw in the air temperature of Christchurch, New Zealand, which is this graph. And in this one, I can see that during a normal year, the surface temperature of the ocean off the coast of Christchurch, New Zealand is 13 degrees Celsius. But during El Nino years, the ocean temperature is very cold. It's only 11 degrees Celsius. So I wonder, like, what questions do you have about the information on the graph? I wonder why. Why is this happening? Why is it so cold during El Nino years in the ocean temperature? It's weird that both the air temperature and the ocean temperature in Christchurch, New Zealand are colder during El Nino years. Is the ocean getting affected by the air or is the air being affected by the ocean? Like, is the ocean colder because the air is cold? Or is the air colder because the ocean's colder? I mean, I have so many questions about this. This would be a great time to pause the video and discuss with your friend or whoever you're choosing to do this lesson with to come up with some ideas that you might have, things you're wondering about. This last graph that we're going to look at is the energy from the sun at Christchurch, New Zealand. Now remember that the amount of energy that comes from the sun is affected by how far away you are from the equator. We saw that when we did our activity in... Um, the last part of this lesson, lesson three, part one. But 
why is this happening? I notice that it's the same. That during a normal year and during El Nino years, the amount of energy that comes from the sun is the same. So let's take a look at these three graphs. So far we've looked at question one and two, but now I'm gonna ask you a third question. How is the evidence connected to what you've been learning about climate, temperature, and energy? So far we've learned that locations closer to the equator receive more energy from the sun than locations further from the equator. So this means that a location's latitude affects its surface and air temperature. And that's what we're, we're seeing here. The temperatures in Christchurch, New Zealand are colder than they are in Hawaii and other places that are near the equator, but hmm. But its air temperature is still cooler during, during El Nino years. We see that here. And also its ocean surface temperature is colder during El Nino years as well. But the amount of energy that comes from the sun is the same. So I think it's time right now for us to think back about the question that we're trying to, we're trying to solve for the Farm Council of New Zealand. They've asked us to help them understand why, during El Nino years, why is the Christchurch New Zealand's temperature cooler than usual? And when we first started this unit, we had a bunch of different ideas. We thought maybe it had to do with the amount of energy from the sun or something about the surface or something about the air. And as I'm looking at these three claims, I wonder, do the graphs support or go against any of these claims about um, Christchurch during El Nino years? So pause the video and take a moment to write some notes or talk to a friend. And I know that some of you can't pause the video, so I'm going to pause talking for a moment because I think this is really important. I want you to ask yourself, is there any of these claims that we could support with the evidence that we've seen from the graphs? And are there any of these claims that are not supported by the information that we've seen from the graphs? Let's just take a moment to think about that. Okay, did you write some notes? Okay, so I'm looking at this and I, I realize that claim one does, it's not supported by the data that we have. If I look here, I can see that the data that Kita Parada has sent us about the amount of energy that they are receiving from the sun in a normal year and an El Nino year remains the same. Which means that I think that we can totally eliminate claim one. When we were first thinking about why this might be happening, we wondered if the amount of sun might be changing, um, or the amount of energy from the sun, and it's pretty clear that it's not changing. So we're kind of left with these two questions, which is what is happening in the air or what's happening with the surface that might be affecting El Nino? So now we have a new mystery about the ocean. Why is the ocean near Christchurch a different temperature than we'd expect for its latitude? It's, it's colder during El Nino years, but why? So we're going to have to explore that in the next lesson. So I'll see you in lesson four. We'll, we'll, we'll start exploring a little bit more about ocean temperatures and why they might be different during El Nino years. Okay, bye.